with all the news from WTCN-TV's expanded news-gathering facility. WTCN-TV, Channel 11. This is Channel 11 News at 10. This is a Carrie Levin News special presentation. It shatters you. I just worry about it all the time. Go on! This is a very devastating illness. They do anything for my son. It's called secretin therapy. It's like a connection has been made that wasn't there before. Jeez. Jeez. It's saving his life. Good evening, I'm Paul Majors. An estimated 500,000 children across the country live with a disorder known as autism. No one knows what causes it, there's no easy way to treat it, and it can strike any family without warning. Ever since word of a possible cure first broke, CARE 11 News has been documenting the work of a team of researchers at the University of Minnesota. Together with a group of 12 young subjects, they set out to see if a miracle cure for autism truly exists. Reporter Mark Daly begins our story. Watch these children play for a moment and you might not notice anything unusual. <laughs> You're being so silly. But watch Jesse here a little bit longer, and soon you realize something is just not right. Sometimes we want to just cheek them and say, snap out of it. Children with autism are socially withdrawn. He's really obsessed with tearing paper. And they repeat the same strange behaviors over and over again. It's as if they perceive the world somehow differently than the rest of us. I can't necessarily venture uh, a guess of what that experience would be like. Um, I would imagine that it might be frightening. Perhaps the hardest thing for many parents of autistic children is simply not knowing what your child is thinking or how he feels. Some people will, uh, you know, they'll, they'll talk to their kids maybe five minutes someday, you know. He's five years old, you know, and I haven't ever had a five-minute conversation with him. That, that's something I'd really like to see, just him be able to talk. Kyle bounces and catches balls like a pro, but he also hits and hits and hits. And I would do everything and anything to help him. Kylie. Like many parents of autistic Please. children, Come here. Kyle's mother frequently feels overwhelmed. Oh my. You know, there's times where I've just, I've thought that I can't do this anymore. Not being able to communicate with a child on, whose behavior can be impossible to understand okay. is emotionally exhausting. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> Nick is another autistic child who's had violent episodes. He had actually gotten to the point to where he would threaten to kill us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he, he tried to he, choke her. Yeah, and he tried to choke his aide at school at one point too. Nick terrorized his siblings so that his parents reluctantly considered sending him to live elsewhere. We got to the point of where either um, there had to be some intervention along the way. Either either we needed to intervene here somehow, either with restraints or medication or he needed to go somewhere and live with other kids that were like him. Get dressed, right? What does that mean? For Mark's parents, too, merely trying to control an autistic child okay. Come on. is a never-ending no, no. battle. Don't talk. We were told that uh, he would never, probably never speak, uh, never hold a job, never marry, never leave the house, uh, be with us the rest of his life, and pretty much uh, not have a life. Go on. Mark's prognosis has since improved, but he still has trouble off. with even the simplest tasks. 
We sat here last weekend and watched him lay half in the street and half on the lawn for an hour, crying. Even experts don't know what causes autism or why some autistic children overcome the condition, okay. but most do not. Kids who are autistic tend to be autistic for life. Alex's parents say caring for a child who constantly throws tantrums and rarely sleeps through the night can put a strain on even the best marriages. It's overwhelming at times. Yeah. <laughs> the at hardest time. thing is uh, finding time for us two to just go and do something. It yeah. doesn't happen very often. Kyle, you just can't take any more. People who don't have autistic children just don't realize how hard it is to do that. No. You just have to know where he is all the time. We actually have to lock him into the house, basically, or at night. Um, he's escaped. He's gotten out a few times. And you, you just don't know what he's going to do. Listen to the parents of autistic children for a while, and you hear the same things over and over again. They say their kids seem this close to not being autistic. It's as if their true personalities are just begging to come out. They're in there. It's Sometimes I look at Nick, and it's almost like he's trapped in this body that um, won't always express what he wishes to express. Autism is, is, is like a beast. And it takes your child and uh, it imprisons your child deep within their own mind. And uh, it leaves you to spend the rest of, rest of your life trying to break him out of that prison. Jesse, watch. Researchers say ordinary sights and sounds just say no, please. Often overwhelm autistic children. They're extra sensitive to being touched. They're sensitive to things that are novel. <laughs> At first, it's almost unbearable. And then you just have to think that things happen for a reason. You don't know why. But they do, and you just keep doing what you have to do. Where did Jesse go? A common way for autistic Jesse children Jesse. to cope is to shy away from noise and Jesse, Jesse. people. Oh. I'd live for the day, Daddy, come play with me. That's, that'd be perfect. That's all I'd want to hear, just a free forward sentence out of his mouth, communicating to me, looking at me. It's a challenge every moment of every day. It's also kind of rewarding. He's, he's a loving little boy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> just like that. Right, Tim? The parents of autistic children want the same things for their kids as other parents do. And to see him playing with somebody else, to have a friend would, would, would be the, the ultimate. No. No, 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 no. The trouble is... Settle down. It's hard to remain hopeful when your heart is breaking. It's like going through a death. They compare it to, um... Because the hopes and dreams you had for your child have to change, they have to be altered. It may seem hopeless at times, but the parents you just heard from are constantly trying to find new ways to help their children overcome autism. In a moment, we'll tell you about a promising new drug that worked wonders for some kids and excited even the most skeptical researchers. The anecdotal evidence is that this drug is doing something. Could this little bottle contain the miracle cure they've been hoping for? The answer when we come back. It'd be nice if he could be able to talk to us. Tell us his feelings. He doesn't know how to tell us his feelings. Somewhere between five and 10,000 Minnesotans live with a devastating illness, autism. Welcome back. Exhausted by the round-the-clock job of caring for their kids, the parents of autistic children are desperate for anything that might help. Two years ago, a New Hampshire mother stumbled upon a drug that she says worked wonders for her little boy. Soon, thousands of parents all across the country were using it. The drug is called Secretin, and as you're about to see, the changes some children show shortly after they get it are truly amazing. Take, take the orange one. Orange! He is absolutely adorable, but sometimes hard to understand. I like the black. I like the black. Who's white and black? I like the black. Zebra. At five years old, Ryan Lineman can repeat short phrases. Listen. 
Listen. But because he's autistic, he has trouble using words to explain what he wants or how he feels. When you don't know what they're thinking and they can't express it, it's very frustrating. I want more. So if Ryan's mother had just one wish. Well, I, that would be to say, hi, Mommy, I love you. You know. Spontaneous. Spontaneously just come up and say, hi, Mom. I love you. Pretty simple wish. Yeah. Two years ago this month, Uncle, yes. Ryan's mom heard something yeah. which gave her reason to hope that her simple wish might come true. It's called secretin therapy, and it's making a remarkable difference for some autistic children. A Dateline report first brought national attention to secretin, a drug normally used to diagnose digestive problems. Parker! Parker! Call him. He stopped talking, stopped sleeping through the night and began oddly spinning. Say mommy. Dateline told the story of Parker Beck, an autistic child who developed chronic diarrhea. During a procedure called an endoscopy to examine his stomach troubles, Parker was given a small dose of secretin. A few days later, Parker's diarrhea disappeared and he began sleeping through the night for the first time in two years. In 10 days after the procedure, Parker's therapist called me downstairs and said, I think you better come and take a look at this. And Parker, who had been totally nonverbal, was now reciting flashcards as quickly as she could hold them up. This is a boy who hadn't talked for two years. That's right. And she was holding up a picture of me, and he was saying, Mommy. Since the Dateline story aired, thousands of autistic children, like Connor Sullivan of West St. Paul, have been treated with secretin. I is for ice cream. R? Rabbit. You. Rabrilla. It's like a connection has been made that wasn't there before. It's saving his life. The anecdotal evidence is that this drug is doing something. Responding to the tremendous public interest, a team of researchers at the University of Minnesota designed a clinical study to determine scientifically whether secretin really works. Look, it's a car. Vroom, vroom. You do it. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. Using a complex series of tests, the spider out. It would be among the most comprehensive and important examinations of secretin ever conducted. You're doing very good, Alex. What we are trying to do is uh, capture any change that might be the result of, of secretin. Yeah, we've tried a lot of things. Eager for anything that might help. Should we put this in here? The parents of more than 150 autistic children hope to get into the study. Only 12 were randomly selected. <sighs> I'm having a really hard time. Jesse is one of the lucky ones. His younger brother, Clint, had a different type of brain disorder and died. I'm hoping this will be able to help him since we couldn't help his brother. You want to go give me? Then no, no hitting. Kyle, one of the boys who hits, also made it into the study. What would it mean to you and your family if Secretin were able to help Kyle? <laughs> Everything. Others in the study include Alex, whose parents anguish at the thought of someday having to put him in a group home. Good boy. Craig, whose family drives 10 hours nearly every week just to participate. And Ryan, whose mother has that one simple wish. I just don't want to get my hopes up and then be let down, you know? To, to sit you up a little bit. Over the course of several months, each child will get two infusions, but only one will be secretin. Every individual that's participating will at some point get the placebo and at some point get the secretin, but nobody knows when. <coughs> Unable to understand why mommy and daddy would allow others to poke them with needles, the infusions are frightening, traumatic experiences for most of the children. I'm sorry, honey. They're doing this to, I know. They're doing this to try to help you, see? 
would be right. nice. Ryan's mother hasn't slept for three nights. She's been so nervous. <laughs> what if this will help him, like, come out of his shell, you know? Because I do think, like, what if he could just, like, snap out of it, you know? Because I just feel like he's so close already. There's just, just this little piece missing. We do believe people who have said, uh, you know, that they've seen an improvement. What we want to do is put that on a scientific basis and actually um, either corroborate it or say that it was one of those things Charles finding. You did a nice job. Did you know that? You did very good. Twelve autistic children. <laughs> Twenty-four infusions. <laughs> Okay. okay. One goal, to see if Secrete really can make dreams come true, or if it's just another heartbreak. God, I hope this does something. Soon after the infusions, several parents started noticing big changes in their children. He was able to focus. He was able to enunciate words, sit and read a book out loud, play with his sister more. Something certainly was happening. But was it the drug that was responsible for the changes, or was it something else? Stay with us and find out when Last Chance Medicine continues. I just want the best for my kids. That's all I've ever wanted. I pray I'm doing the right thing. Twelve young children, all of them autistic, appeared to be on the verge of making medical history. Shortly after being infused with a drug called Secretin, their parents say they noticed big changes in the children. Care Levin's Mark Daly picks up the story from there. Ryan. 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 For several months, beginning last November, Ryan and 11 other children participated in an important clinical study at the University of Minnesota. The purpose? To see if a drug called secretin is an effective treatment for autism. It is clear that, that this substance uh, does uh, affect the central nervous system. Um, it is unclear exactly how. When we heard about the study, we thought, you know, that'd be an ideal situation, we'd have a controlled setting and, and professionals working with him that are familiar with autism and that, rather than trying to go out and try to do it on our own. Owie, owie. Each child receives two infusions, several weeks apart. What a big brave boy you are. One will be secretin, the other a placebo. But nobody, not even the researchers, will know which is which until the study is completely over. There you go. Very good, Sam. Real good. That's a good boy. Sam's father heard from the parents of other autistic children that secretin works wonders. You know, we're just hoping for the best. I don't think people are making these things up. The researchers, however, are skeptical. I'm, I think, much less optimistic than uh, sort of certainly the parents. Kyle is severely autistic. Kyle. He has almost no language skills, okay. and he don't, hits people don't. constantly. Yeah. If secretin doesn't help, Kyle's mother has no idea what she'll try next. The bigger and stronger he gets, it just gets more difficult. Others in the study include Jesse, whose younger brother had a different type of brain disorder and died five years ago. Sometimes I think, <laughs> are we doing it for us or are we doing it, you know, for him? I think he likes his world. Adam, whose father dreams of someday actually having a conversation with his son. Oh. Oh. Okay. Alex, Do you want to come here? whose behavior takes a toll on his whole family. The calm before the storm. And Mark, whose father <laughs> anxiously awaited his son's first infusion last December. Boy, I hope we get the real deal. Would be a great Christmas. At this point, almost all of the children have gotten two infusions, one of secretin and one of a placebo. But even though their parents haven't been told yet which was which, many of them have already made up their minds whether secretin works. No, we're not done, honey. Okay. Honey, we're not done. We're not done. I'm sorry. After two infusions, Jesse's mother says she's seen little change. It's an awful experience for him if he if he doesn't change that much more, I don't know if it's really worth the pain for him. <laughs> Likewise, neither Adams nor Sam's parents report dramatic differences. Yeah. 
Because Kyle is becoming almost impossible to control, his mother's as desperate as any parent for Secretin to do something. Sorry, I'm all right. All right, are you okay, Queen? No. But a week after his second yeah, infusion, Kyle is only getting harder to handle. You know, I started thinking, just hoping that something would happen. You know, <laughs> then of course, it just doesn't happen. It didn't happen for Alex either. To me, the hardest day in um, our lives was the day we got the diagnosis. That was the hardest day. Now you just stay busy trying to find something that'll help. Yum, yum. All in one day, I was just like, wow, is this the same kid? <laughs> it's a different story for Ryan, however. Remember his mother's simple wish that Ryan would spontaneously say, I love you? I was talking to Manny, he says, I love you, Mama. Oh, he, no, he said, I love you. I'm like, wow. I was first, like, shocked. That's not all. Instead of getting frustrated, Ryan's now asking for things. I need help. You need help? What do you need help? I See? need help. I need help. Is it cold? And instead of throwing a fit like many autistic children do, What's still? Ryan suddenly What's still? sits still for haircuts. I don't know if it was the drug or if it was just a natural growth. It would be nice, nice to find out. <laughs> Following one administration of we don't know which, <laughs> um, we have noticed that a few of the children's behavior is different. One week after his first infusion, Mark's parents got the Christmas present they'd been praying for. That was a, that was a good week. He was able to focus. He was able to enunciate words, sit and read a book out loud, play with his sister more. Which one? That one. So right away he's okay. talking more. He said that one instead of just pointing to it. Researchers noted changes too. But about a month later, Mark's parents say he regressed. But, um, that behavior's just hard to see. Mark's mother is convinced he got secretin his first infusion, and she's desperate to get him more. We need to wait till the study's over, find out if he got it. But um, I just worry about him all the time. Most of the parents think they know when they got the secretin. And what if they're wrong? I mean, we have to tell them, but uh, I think psychologically it's going to be very, very difficult. Oh, Does it you up a little bit? Did they get the secretin first, or was it a placebo? Running. For some, Running. the answer could mean a whole new world of possibilities. For others, the sad truth is there may never be easy answers. <laughs> it encompasses your whole life. It's, it affects every aspect of your life. Some parents believe secretin helped their kids. Others clearly do not. While those opinions certainly are important, we still haven't heard what the researchers have to say. Remember, they're testing secretin to see if it has any effect on the kids, be it language skills, mood, even digestive changes. <laughs> We're supposed to remain objective and, and somewhat um, detached, but it's hard not to be hopeful and to get excited that there might actually be something to this. The long-awaited scientific results are yet to come. Can you do this? Here, can I hold this for a minute? Chickens. Okay. Chickens, do chickens. Can you try chickens? You may have noticed that all 12 of the children in the secretion study are boys, no girls. That's due in part to the fact that 80% of the people with autism are male girls were eligible to participate in the study, but a random selection process picked 12 boys. In a moment, we'll hear more from the researchers as they report their scientific findings on secretin. But first, we'll take a look at two other treatments for autism, both with advocates who swear the treatments work. No. Like a lot of first graders, you get the end, you you can win. Seven-year-old Josh Stern is a whiz at Nintendo. You can move up by moving of this. He's also got a nice touch on the basketball court. Not bad, especially for a kid who was diagnosed as autistic when he was two and a half years old. One day, I gave Clifford a bath. 
Now, Josh reads just as well as most of his classmates. And his math skills are even better than some. How'd all this happen? Joshy, touch your head. Four years ago, Josh's parents started using intensive behavior therapy. Good job, Joshy! Modeled after a program developed by UCLA psychology professor Ivar Lovas. Sit down. The Lovas method relies on positive reinforcement and repetition. Oh, how nice. Oh, good luck. The instructions oh, good are simple. Look at me. Yeah, look at me. That's good luck. That's good luck. Sit down. Good. That's good, Lisa. Good sitting. Yeah. Here, Dr. Lovas discovers that kissing is a reinforcer for Lisa. Good, Lisa. <laughs> Ten days after his third birthday, Nick Johansson's living room is filled with an entire team of behavior therapists. Ninety percent of the families that we've worked with are happy with the results. Come sit. To maximize the benefits, advocates say behavior therapy needs to be started early, by age three or four. What's this? Duck. Yeah! And it needs to be truly intensive, like 40 hours a week. Mom. Yeah! Six months into the program, Nick's parents say they've seen tremendous improvements. He's a happy kid, and he's he's going to go a long ways. He's, he's really doing well. Pull. Critics of the Lovas method say the skills some autistic children learn resemble animal tricks. We are using the same general procedures that we would use in the laboratory with animals. That's how we developed these basic procedures. So we can't apologize and say, well, no, we're not doing what you would do with an animal. But obviously, we're doing very different things. We're not teaching animals how to talk. In fact, advocates say, after three years of intensive behavior therapy, nearly half of all children like Nick will do as well as kids like Josh. I don't care. Nearly half, but not all. Sarah has red apple. <laughs> Yellow. Shuffle. Say it better. Josh's twin brother, Joey, is also Yellow. autistic. Shuffle. Behavior therapy certainly has helped Joey, but nowhere near okay. as much. All done. All done. Experts say behavior therapy is clearly the most proven treatment for autism, but a growing number of families are trying something entirely different, a gluten-free, casein-free diet. Basically, that means no dairy or wheat products. The parents of one little boy say, before the diet, nobody in their house was safe from him. I rock on an old horse when I was a little tiny baby. Nick Schrantz is not the same little guy he was a couple of years ago. He used to spend most of the day on his rocking horse. Nick also used to hurt people a lot. He didn't just hit, he'd throw things too. And throw things too. So I got we were always, yeah, we've got marks in the walls. Our walls look awful. We'd have to duck. I mean, there was always something flying at somebody. His younger brother was just terrorized. Nick, are you going to push the car today? On this day, Nick and his mom and Nick's two sisters Why don't we get his bread first? are on a mission. A little bit harder and more challenging than one would think. They're searching. I think I got broccoli on the list. For secret ingredients. Like they've got on here, chicken broth, dehydrated onion, dehydrated celery, and natural spices. What is natural spices? To most people, it might not matter. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. This is not your kind of jello. But to Nick, okay. it certainly does. You can't have any products that may have gluten um, contamination. You've got to be careful of that. Actually, we're not even supposed to toast our bread in the same toaster. Advocates of the diet believe in something called a gut-brain link. Simply put, chemical reactions in the digestive system affect the brain and ultimately behavior. Look at it in there. Many children with autism have sensitive digestive systems. There's a lot of uh, uh, sort of abnormalities that are reported by parents and their children in terms of bowel habit, in terms of uh, diet, in terms of 
symptomatology generally. Rice flour, rice bran extract, this is all right. Before he was on the diet, Nick's sisters say they were afraid of him. It was sad because he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, and it was scary because he would throw stuff at us. Yeah. I'm not sure he'd be living with us without the diet. He was um, so violent to a point where, I mean, he'd just throw things. He's usually just like a normal kid, but when he has gluten or dairy or anything, he's like, off on his own little planet. We watch Star Wars and there's gonna be Darth Morgan. To find the food Nick needs, Renee Schrantz has to go to two different stores, nearly an hour from home. Rye flour. Specialty items like gluten-free bread and casein-free tofu slices Shrantz. can add a hundred dollars to their weekly food bill. You want this in a sandwich today? Uh-huh. Okay. Since he's been on the diet, Nick's mom says the improvements in his behavior have been dramatic. I can't help but wonder if it has to do with some of the chemicals that are in the foods that we all eat. Because of the many foods that Nick can't eat... His noodles have got to be different. We have rice noodles. They're basically rice and water. Sticking to the diet is hard. His cereals, all rice. But given the alternative, Nick living elsewhere, the choice is easy. Well, the diet hasn't been, you know, it's not a cure-all. For him, it, I believe it's really helped and has been instrumental in the gains that he has made. If you'd like to learn more about these or other treatments for autism, you can contact the Twin Cities Autism Society at 651-647-1083. The Society provides a variety of information and referral services. Coming up next, the long-awaited results of the secretin study. Okay. Will it turn okay. out to be the miracle drug everyone was hoping for? It. What I'll present you now is his results. For some families, this could be their last chance to stay together. Two days later, playing the same game, he looked at me and goes, I love you, Dad. This is fun. And I had never heard that in five and a half years or five and a quarter years. It was uh, pretty unbelievable. But I'm getting better than that. Midway through the secretin study, several parents were convinced that their children were showing significant improvement. But if those improvements came after the infusion of a placebo, not secretin, then those parents and their little boys would be right back where they started. Once again, here's reporter Mark Daly. Twelve little boys. I think Dolly is thirsty. I think okay. Each very different from the others, <laughs> but all with two things in common. Autism. This is a very devastating illness. <laughs> and parents who are terribly desperate to help them. I'll do, they do anything for my son. Can you open the top? For four long months, the 12 Can little boys that? were prodded and poked <laughs> and tested and retested by a team of researchers at the University of Minnesota. No! Actually, I think it's almost harder on the parents than it is with the child, because when your child is hurting, you hurt. Oh, there you go. Why did they put themselves through all this? <laughs> to see if a single dose of a drug called secretin is an effective treatment for autism. Almost, almost, almost done, almost done. We want our data as much as it possibly can to, to, to guide us and, and tell us whether this is something to get excited about or this is just another dead end. Next time. I am nice. I am nice. To my? To my. To my baby sister. Mark's parents and several others say Mom's shortly after one infusion or another, they saw improvements, big and small. A window opened up, something happened. Uh, I don't know how you'd measure it, but uh, like his personality came out that wasn't there. Hi, my two. That's good. Mark not only reads and enunciates better now, but instead of throwing a traumatic fit, last December he sat calmly on Santa's lap for the first time ever. Yeah. What a great Christmas. And clearly you see something going on, but I don't know what it's attributed to. Five months after the first infusion, today is the day the researchers will finally learn during which infusion each okay. child got the secretin. Right. Thank you so much. Don't open it. <laughs> Wait, I have to be sitting down. <laughs> Look, I can't even figure out where my office is. If the improvement some children showed came after an infusion of secretin, it could be an important medical breakthrough. 
so we can now start analyzing the results. But if the improvements came after placebos, it's back to square Two. one. Zero, zero, one, one, zero, correct? He is miserable when he's constipated. Well, owie! Yes, it will be an owie, but you'll be a big, strong boy. Sam's mother says that shortly after his first infusion, owie! Sam's owie! digestive problems improved. And for a while, he stopped scratching, pinching, and biting. It would help immensely just if his system would work correctly. I know that's so hard. Likewise, Craig and Adam's parents hope that test proves secretin is as effective as they believe it is, because that'll make it easier for their children to get more. What I'll present to you now is his results. The news, which the families Before got individually, was not news. good. We're not seeing um, that much change. The most significant change occurred towards the um, beginning of the study, um, actually uh, following placebo. This drug has not resulted in huge behavioral changes in these children. You know, everybody hopes for a, a miracle cure and uh, doesn't look like it's a miracle cure. <laughs> there was, however, one exception. There clearly was um, a difference in his behavior. Let's rub noses like the Eskimoses. <laughs> Shortly after he got secreted, Ryan began interacting and making eye contact more. Important first steps in overcoming autism. His social ability has just grown. Even so, his parents and the researchers believe that Ryan's progress may simply have been natural development. I think it would be a mistake to say that, um, you know, his perhaps positive response to cretin was truly a drug effect. It isn't like he can just take a pill and, oh, gee, I'm all better. It's hours and hours and hours of uh, time. Well, I'm interested in, in, in doing another round. Despite the researchers' findings that secretin is ineffective, five of the 12 families in the study, nearly half, want more. It'd be nice, I guess, to try and be able to get a couple more doses to see if it makes a difference. I think there's no doubt that there's a certain element of desperation. Time is running out in terms of these children growing up, the cumulative effect of autism over time. We looked at the, the, the statistical results that they saw too, uh, that the doctors saw, and they said, hey, this is statistically insignificant, but to us it was very significant. I mean, little things are big for us. Lots of juice. Lots of juice. It's interesting that they feel they have positive findings that we couldn't measure, and that may represent problems with the testing itself. Like others, Adam's parents' greatest concern is their child's future. He's getting stronger every day, and you know, we just kind of worry about, you know, how far are we going to be able to go. Ready, set, come on, come on. <laughs> Don't chicken out. Remember Kyle, the most severely autistic child in the study? For no one is the future more uncertain. It's like a roller coaster ride. There's always good times and there's always really hard times. Secretin wasn't the miracle cure they were seeking. But if there is a magic formula for Kyle and the others, it's sure to include an extra large dose of hope and determination. We're doing fine and we're always gonna do fine because we're always just gonna keep trying to help him. <laughs> Despite the disappointing findings, the Secretin study is serving as an important springboard for autism treatment and research. In fact, several of the doctors who participated in the study are establishing an autism center at the University of Minnesota. The center will be the first of its kind anywhere and will focus on everything from discovering what causes autism to learning more about treating it. Our center is going to be have both the research and the clinical part and I think that's what makes it so exciting because we'll be able to provide these state-of-the-art treatments for children with autism. More on plans for the new Autism Center and how you can help when we come back. What you're really talking about here is hope uh, in a world that for these kids has been pretty hopeless for a long time. Right. The number of children being diagnosed with autism is increasing at an alarming start. rate. No one knows why and that makes it impossible to prevent. Responding to what they say is a crisis situation, researchers have established a center for autistic spectrum disorders. There's no place like it anywhere in the country. All right.
right, are you ready? Yes? Yes. Mark it set? Go. Even before doctors confirmed it, oh. Jimmy Reagan's parents figured out on their own that their little boy was autistic. Pedal, you got a pedal. It hits pretty hard. And this is a devastating disease for which there's no cure. Limited in his language skills, Jimmy can't share with anyone what it's like to live with autism. In many ways, his parents have felt equally isolated. I think what was most difficult is just not having anywhere to go, not having anybody to, to, to talk to who really could tell you very much about what was wrong with them. Now, there is a place to go. This is um, kind of a dream come true in any world that deals with children in development. Before the furniture had even arrived, researchers at the new Center for Neurobehavioral Development at the University of Minnesota could hardly wait to get started. There is nothing like this anywhere. Dr. Charles Nelson is a pioneer in the field of neuroimaging. Excellent. Each one of these squiggly lines represents a different part of her brain. Using state-of-the-art technology, Start tapping. some of it developed right here at the U, Dr. Nelson and his colleagues will be able to study the human brain and behavior like never before. We think we can use those tools to shed additional light on the development of children with autism. Within the Neurobehavioral Center, a multidisciplinary team of researchers, many of whom worked together for the first time on a secretin study, Set. will focus solely on autism. It's very important that uh, we pay attention to this. This is, a, this is a crisis many people feel, and I agree with that. That is a crisis that we really need to address now. Yes? You want to go? Yes or no? Nobody knows why yes. such an alarming power? number of children, like Jimmy Reagan, have recently been diagnosed with autism. Push, 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 pedal! In an attempt to find out, all children referred to the new autism center will be examined by a variety of specialists. There you go. Every child will have a developmental evaluation and a neuropsychological evaluation. And every child will have a neurological examination. From there on, uh, everything will be according to what the needs are for that individual child. More swing? Yes or no? Yes. The Reagans think so highly of the Autism Center's integrated approach, they made a generous donation to help things get started. The center will provide hope, uh, hope that they'll be understanding of the disease and hope that uh, someday there will be a cure. Come here, Jimmy. Meanwhile, Come on, let's climb. the Reagans want the very same things for Jimmy <laughs> as they do for their other children. I want him to be happy, I want him to be healthy, and I want him to be as successful as his uh, abilities will allow him to be. Much work remains to be done, but inspired by the dedication of so many parents. We're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. They are a model for all of us on how to care for our children and to keep caring, even in the hardest of times. The founding members of the new Center for Autistic Spectrum Disorders appreciate fully why their work is so important. The children's lives are at stake. For thousands of children in Minnesota, the Autism Center at the U provides new reason for hope. If you'd like to find out more about the Center for Autistic Spectrum Disorders, you can call 612-625-3617. Representatives at the center will be able to give you individual attention. We leave you now with an update on a courageous group of medical pioneers, the young boys who participated in the Secretin study. We thank them and their parents for allowing us to share with you their story. Good night. How you doing, honey? You say hi, Mom? Jesse is now a third grader at Forest Lake Elementary School, where he is mainstreamed and receives special education. I love you, honey. At home, Jesse's tantrums have become harder to control. He recently kicked a hole in a piece of sheetrock. Overall, Jesse's mom says he's doing pretty well. He's a very bright kid. He knows a lot of things. Ryan recently celebrated his sixth birthday, and he's enjoying kindergarten. His parents like the way he's been interacting with other children lately, but Ryan's mom says his play behavior sometimes is immature. Let's rub noses. He's a very loving, affectionate, sweet little guy. I love him just the way he is. I love you. I love you. 
Alex is here, so let's get ready to do our hello to your Seven-year-old Alex like is that. still nonverbal. Hi. He has no spontaneous Hi. language skills. Hi. I could best describe it as um, an infant that grows but mentally doesn't grow. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Allergy problems kept Alex out of school earlier this fall. His mother says taking care of him remains very challenging. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hey, Mark. Mark's father says dealing with autism is like a war, and every day is another battle. There's a daily depletion of uh, spirit that <laughs> goes hand in hand with this. And you wonder what the future is going to bring. Mark's turn. Mark is taking medication now to keep him calm and focused. His parents are still considering trying to get him more secrete. Nick's mother says he's doing well in his second grade class, but he sometimes has trouble focusing. She also says he's been argumentative lately, but she hopes that's just a normal part of growing up. You know, it's kind of like regular children that don't have autism. Um, it'd be nice if they came with some kind of a manual, but they don't. And what works for one doesn't work for another. Yeah. Eager for his first fishing trip this fall, Nick practiced in his backyard using a long stick. Oh. Owie! Yes, it will be an owie, but you'll be a big, strong boy. Sam was the oldest child who participated in the study. He turned 13 in July, and as a seventh grader, he's adjusting to a new school. Like any other teenager, Sam has good days and bad. His parents are still debating whether to pursue more secretin to help his digestive problems. We're not looking for any miracle cures or anything like that just to you know anything that'll help them try to be better and be more self-sufficient Craig. Craig turned six years old this past summer and started kindergarten in the fall Where'd the ball go his vocabulary consists of a few dozen words <laughs> but he still doesn't speak in sentences Craig's mother hopes to get him another dose of secretin Throw the ball around. sometime before Thanksgiving up, up, up. All done. <laughs> Oh, he keeps the camera. <laughs> if he said a word, I think I'd faint. Kyle's mom remains appreciative of all the support she gets from family and friends. Kyle's tantrums are less frequent than they used to be, but even more intense. He needs a lot of help. Wait, you want to go give me? Then no, no, he didn't give me a kissy. At school, it takes two educational specialists at once to take care of Kyle. Whoa, Kyle. I would just want him to know that I love him. <laughs> that that would be a dream. A big dream. Adam's parents still would like to get him more secretin, but they haven't had any luck finding a doctor able to help with that. <laughs> a first grader now. Adam says autumn when he tries to pronounce his own name. Go ahead, you try. His parents say Adam's Yay. hitting is still a problem, and he's working on potty training. I don't know, you know if we'll ever defeat this beast called autism, but uh, with everybody working on it the way they are, and, and just working and trying to get it done, that autism, that beast, it won't win.